So now we're going to be looking at wired system connection methods. Now the only three in the book are CAT 5E, coaxial cable, and fiber optic. So CAT 5E, think of this as an Ethernet cable, not an internet cable, but Ethernet, E-T-H-E-R, Ethernet cable. This is the ones that we typically have in the back of our Virgin routers that goes from the internet box to our PCs, Xbox, Playstations, cable boxes, whatever, right? These are very, very common, very cheap. Even though it says CAT 5E, think of it as simply CAT cables, because now it goes way beyond five. I think it's up to six or seven now. So there's CAT 5, CAT 5E, CAT 6, CAT 6E, so on and so forth. Think of this as an ethernet cable. So Ethernet cables or telephone communication cables are versatile and widely available. A lot of devices use it, so compatibility is always really good. Nowadays, we have some laptops actually moving away from using Ethernet cables full stop and using only Wi-Fi, like my Dell XPS 15 here. However, it is still being used on a tremendous amount of devices. Xbox Series X has it, the PS5 has it, most laptops have it, TVs have it. Even your Virgin or your TalkTalk Talk media box in your front room might have it because it gives much better um, speeds compared to Wi-Fi on the same network. It is very cheap. If you go onto Amazon, you can probably find a CAT 5E, a CAT 6E cable for easily under £10. And the CAT 6E cable, I do believe you get up to one gigabyte download per second. Most broadbands in, in the UK are way, way below one gigabyte per second. So you get maximum speeds if you have a cable. Because of the nature of this cable, of most cables in general, signals normally degrade the further they have to travel, either Wi-Fi or by cable. But this cable specifically, the Ethernet cable, it is susceptible to more interference than others. For example, fiber optic. The typical rule of thumb is that anything close to 100 meters using an Ethernet cable, the signal starts to degrade. It does, be, it does start to get choppy. It does start to get unreliable. Right, so next we have coaxial cable. Now this is what that cable looks like and we normally see these screwed into the back of our um, routers or maybe in the back of our TVs to give us that, that good reception. So here we have the advantages and disadvantages of using coaxial cable. So first and foremost, it supports high bandwidth levels, meaning you can send a lot of data through it at any one time. It's easy to install. And again, normally you simply screw this part into the back of whatever you're trying to use it for it it's easy to locate because it is so distinct it is easy to locate in in terms of i guess you can differentiate it from other cables relatively quickly it can provide power low power devices so it's very small tiny electronics can be powered using the coaxial cable bigger devices not so much it is rugged rugged meaning it doesn't get damaged as easily. Something like fiber optic gets damaged relatively easily because, well, I'll explain when I get to the fiber optic section. Now we have the drawbacks. It is relatively bulky. Now when it says it's bulky, it's not so huge that it becomes unwieldy. It's just it might be slightly thicker than, let's say, something like an, a typical Ethernet cable. Is it expensive to install over longer distances because of the thickness and stiffness? That is true. Most cabling jobs once you get to a certain distance, it does become very expensive. It says it needs to be grounded to limit interference. Grounding is an electronic term, which means um, to bring to ground. So if there is any interference, it will go straight to ground and it won't cause any problems. And what interference is, is simply outside stuff coming in to cause problems for the signal. So for example, um, if you have a signal passing through something and there are radio, radio waves coming from something else, maybe a radio, a TV, uh, a car driving by, it might cause interference. This doesn't happen so much anymore because the technology has been around for so long, but it is something you need to um, be aware of. Fiber optic cable is now the new technology that most of us would like to be using. It's mainly used again for Telephones, internet, cable, television, computer networking, so on and so forth. But we are going to focus, obviously, on computer networking. It is... The security is very good. The others, it's relatively easy to tap those cables. Now, what tapping is, you essentially cut the cable, you put a piece of wire, attach a piece of wire onto the cable that's already there, and you, as a, as a third person, will also be able to see what is being sent and received along that line. 
Whereas fiber optic, if you cut that cable, it's completely damaged. There's no way of going around it. Unlike the others, fiber optic can be used over long distances. And again, the reason being, it actually transmits data using light rather than using electrical signals. And light doesn't degrade as much over long distances because of the medium that's being used. So because the inside of a fiber optic cable is essentially um, glass or reflect or reflective surface, the light, the light will essentially keep bouncing along the inside until it gets to where it needs to get to. Whereas a signal needs to be pushed through each time by more current. It is very expensive compared to other forms of cables. Now, this is why it's ten, it tends to be used mainly by internet service providers. For example, Virgin is one of the companies here in the UK that provides really good um, broadband speeds because they tend to only use fiber optic. Whereas the other companies, they might have a phone line um, which actually splits for phone so for voice and for internet. So that's why those tend to be a bit slower, whereas the fiber optic connections tend to be faster and more stable. So they're faster, more stable, more reliable, and harder to hack. So security is better as well. But they are more expensive and not as easy to install. People do have to get special training to know how to install fiber optic cables. So next, we're going to be looking at cables that can be used to connect devices together. So before we looked at cables that could be used to connect devices to a network. Now, devices to one another. First, we have VGA, Video Graphics Array. This is an analog connection used for video display. It's relatively old, but some people still use it. It's very cheap. You simply normally have to screw this part into your motherboard or graphics card, and then screw the other end, which looks exactly the same, into your monitor. Now, they do have female and male connections, but it really doesn't matter. Some devices, they take both. So they had decent resolutions where you, you could get an HD quality image. Um, however, it was not full HD in most cases. This cable today is very, very cheap. You can pick one up from Amazon again for a couple of pounds. So those are the two advantages there. Now, the disadvantages are um, the signal is affected over distance normally, meaning just like other forms of analog transmission, the longer the cable gets, there is more noise, there's more distortion. But people don't tend to have that problem because normally you have your computer sitting relatively close to your monitor. Now, if you do have to use it across long distances, that's something you do have to pay attention to. A newer technology that replaces this is HDMI, which is something I will speak about. This cable, VGA, does not have digital rights management. HDMI, so if you're watching something um, on Netflix on your Skybox, for example, right? There are ways to actually plug something into that and record what's coming out of the Skybox. On HDMI, there is technology in place that limits or removes that, so you cannot record. Whereas VGA, you can record whatever goes across a VGA cable. It does not have digital rights management. So now we're on to HDMI, High Definition Multimedia Interface. Now, unlike VGA, which only carried image, um, HDMI can actually carry both image and sound. So video is essentially images played in sequence, right? So essentially it can do video and it can do sound. The resolution capable with HDMI is much, much higher than it is with uh, VGA. Now, I've seen HDMI cables that go 8K at 120 frames. So, for example, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X apparently will do 8K at 120 frames. So that's 120 frames per second at 8K video. It's mainly using computing and entertainment. So, as I mentioned before, those two consoles, the, um, those skyboxes I mentioned earlier, um, most laptops will have an HDMI cable. Most TVs will have an HDMI port to plug the cable into as well. The length is normally limited, so I've never really seen an HDMI cable over 10 meters. Because it is newer technology, because it is digital, it is significantly more expensive than VGA cables. So for example, if you were to buy a one meter VGA cable, you might be able to buy that for, let's just say five pounds right? A one meter HDMI cable might be 10 pounds. It's not a great deal more, but in the grand scheme of things, we're just looking at the numbers, it's, it's actually twice as much in most cases or more. 
but simply put hdmi cables will be more expensive they are they are universal as well a lot of modern devices will just have an hdmi port and a lot of times you will get an hdmi cable with some of those devices so here finally we have usb universal serial bus universal meaning it's very popular it can be used in many places serial transmission means that you can only send or receive if it were parallel you could send and receive so again serial means that you can only send or receive at any one time if it were parallel connection you could send and receive and a bus just seem just means a way to transmit all right so it is mainly used for connecting peripheral devices uh, to a computer or to a system right so i think anyone who's watching this video definitely either uses usb or knows what usb is it is one of the fundamental pieces of technology attached to computers nowadays um, apple removed the usb port from their laptops a couple years ago and they it was outright they, they actually had to bring it back in 2021 i believe it is high speed depending on the technology you're using so there's usb 1 usb 2 usb 3 3.1 and 3.2 very confusing where they do the 3.1s but let's just say USB 1 is significantly slower than USB 3, obviously. So it does have high speed capabilities. It is backward compatible. So if you have a PC, like my laptop here has USB 3 ports, I can use a USB 1 cable or 1 plug, and I can also use a USB 2 cable or plug, right? And it works perfectly fine. The speeds, however, would be limited to whatever the speed of USB 1 is. And whatever the speed of usb 2 is even though i myself have a usb 3 port so backward compatible or backward compatibility means that it will work with all the technology now you can connect multiple devices i actually have a usb let's say dock or extender plugged into my laptop because i only have two usb ports but the good thing about usb is you can add as many additions as you want i have a dock plugged into one of my ports which then gives me four extra usb ports and because i'm using usb 3 it's still relatively fast normally i can transfer a file from my mem memory sticks uh, or my hard drive to my laptop roughly 100 megabytes per second using this dock that i got for what, five ten pounds i'm able to do it at 98 megabytes per second so i lose two megabytes so in the grand scheme of things, very beneficial because I get more ports. And that's one of the good things about USB. You can use multiple devices together. So limited distance is like everything else, right? The longer the cable, the worse the signal, right? A limited power supply as well. Now, USB devices tend to be very low powered. Now, USB-C and USB 3.0 and above is kind of changing this a bit because you can actually power monitors from USB. It is not very common yet, but all the USB 1, USB 2, and maybe early USB 3 technology wasn't so great for powering other devices, but USB 3, 3.1, 3.2 and above, they can actually do that. So from one of the exam questions that pops up, it says Mira wants to connect her new laptop to the large 4K LCD touchscreen TV in the conference room to allow her to collaborate with colleagues on product development. The question says, describe what wired connection method or methods Mira should consider to get the best out of the system. Now, there are quite a few that she can consider, but I think the main one has to, or the main ones have to be VGA and HDMI. So VGA, slightly older technology, does give you good high resolution images. However, it, it will not give you 4K images on VGA. Now HDMI, newer technology, it's digital. It will go up to and surpass in most cases 8K video. So her wanting to do 4K, her wanting to have a touch screen that might be important as well. Now the touchscreen part of it is where things get kind of interesting because HDMI does transfer some data, but in most cases, you actually have to use USB as well. So this is a bit of a tricky one. So for this one, um, this is a much older question, but in today's day and age, I would actually say USB 3.1 or USB-C or USB Thunderbolt. Now these are things that you guys 
I, sh I do recommend that you guys just go and read up and watch a quick video on. I don't have enough time here to go over everything. But I would say USB-C um, should work really well for this because not only will it transfer video and audio, but it will also transfer the touch that is being used on the touchscreen TV as well. HDMI in some cases might do this, but normally for HDMI to actually have touchscreen interface working fine, it has to be coupled, it has to be used with a USB cable. So having USB that does everything might be more beneficial.